Welcome to our episode of Bargain Saturdays, and this week I decided to take a look at Call of the Wilderness, which I got in this uh, eight movie pack, because we got, you know, Fangs of the Wild and seven bonus movies. So I figured the first one to look at was Call of the Wilderness, because, you know, the main character's called Lobo. Yep. So I was like, you know, if it's got my name in there, I gotta talk about this movie first. So... What What is Call of the Wilderness? Well, it's a 1932 film that also goes by the name Trailing the Killer and Lobo. And it is boring as... I, I, I wish I could drop an expletive, but, you know, Daddy YouTube doesn't like that. But, yeah, it, it's a very boring film. Like, there's just minutes of airtime devoted to, you know, watching the dog fight a rattlesnake or watching a raccoon eat a turtle or... You know, scenes with just Bambi sitting there eating and doing nothing. And this deer has nothing to do with the rest of the film. They just shot a bunch of footage of a deer to pad out the movie. It's like, we gotta get that hour plus runtime in there somehow. Shoot more footage of the deer! I'm like, like, gosh darn it. And while there are some human characters, because, you know... Lobo's a hunting dog, and, you know, is on the trail for the killer, you know, the mountain lion that murdered his master, and framed him for killing a bunch of sheep. So, yeah, like, like the premise of the dog trying to get revenge for the mount, on the mountain lion for, you know, killing his master, I can get behind this, you know, basic plot premise, but the way they go about shooting this film, and the pacing... It's just awful. Like, I think they're trying to go for, like, more of the feel of a silent movie. Hence why they have so much music and stuff. Playing in the background just constantly and have very little dialogue. Like, well, there are human characters and they do do stuff. <laughs> a fine bunch of dudes you are with your shooting and trap. I'll show you how to do it. You get them by the neck like this. With your bare hands and... Oh, 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 he got me! <laughs> <laughs> you fellas call that a snare trap? Why, that wouldn't even hold a rabbit. Ah, help! Shoot him! He got me! They don't get that much screen time and they don't say very much. We're mostly just watching, you know, footage of animals while music plays. And the problem is, you know, it just doesn't keep any sort of real pace going for it, that'd be brisk. Like, this film probably should have seen, you know, more of the axe on the footage, you know, and just been shortened down to, like, maybe 30 minutes or so. Or they need to have the human characters do more um, to help, you know, fill out the runtime a bit with stuff that's more meaningful or relatable to, you know, the audience. Or, you know, oh, those puppies are cute, but do I have to spend, you know, 10 minutes watching a puppy play with a bullfrog over the course of multiple scenes? No. Like, th this is not dealing with any of the plot about the mountain lion, you know, until the puppy finally follows that bullfrog out into the onto a log, you know, and then floats down the river. I mean, I know they're trying to go with the sub for the puppy getting into trouble, but puppies getting into trouble is pretty common, you know. You don't need to spend so much time setting up that this puppy likes to chase after frogs. So, yeah. This 1932 film just really doesn't stand the test of time. It's it's not surprising it's not copyrighted. Because um, most people wouldn't care to have ownership of this film. They're, just like, they're like, it's bad. It's boring. No one's going to want to really watch it unless it's free. And you can find it on the, YouTube for free, literally the entire thing. Like, the only saving grace I have is that, you know, I picked this up either at the Goodwill or the Dollar Tree brand new, so I didn't spend much money on it. <laughs> and I'm thankful for that, because, you know, it's if this is the quality of the first film, I'm not impressed. Plus, one of the films, Skull and Crown, we've already covered on this channel. Albeit that video only has one view, I believe, so almost no one wants to talk about that old like, 30s film either. Oh, I'm... Uh, yeah, 1935, yeah. So, yeah, we've covered some old movies before, but... Yeah, like, they just 
a lot of them just don't stand the test of time very well. Like, the pacing and stuff just feels way too slow for a modern audience. Maybe, maybe it worked better back then, but I assume even back then this wouldn't have been considered a particularly good movie to sit down and watch. Just because of the, how boring it is. Until next time, then. See ya.